Hey, welcome to Predicting Products. This is Ms. Carr, and this is our vodcast on whether or not a reaction will occur. So we're going to talk today specifically about single replacement reactions, and we're going to talk about whether or not they will happen and if we can uh, predict whether or not they are going to happen. Because what we've done so far is we've predicted what the products will be. And if you're still having trouble predicting what the products will be, we'll um, I would be happy to go over some of the details of that later. Um, and we'll have a follow-up podcast for for those of you that need it. Um, what we were going to do is look at not just what products will there be, which is what we've been looking at for the last several days, but how do we know that this reaction is going to happen? For example, here we have potassium and lithium chloride. And we see here that potassium is a metal ion. It's a positive charge. And lithium is also a metal ion with a positive charge. And so this potassium is going to come in and replace that lithium. Or is it? We don't really know. So what we have to take a look at is, is this potassium going to replace this lithium? Is this reaction actually going to occur? And so we don't really know if this reaction even happens in reality. So the way that we do this, um, sorry, there's a typo there. The way we determine this is for a single replacement reaction is we look at an activity series. Now, you guys have looked at an activity series or you've actually created an activity series by um, using metals and metal reactions in the last lab. So you've created some miniature activity series and then put them together into a larger activity series. Now, the good news for you guys, um, especially those of you taking the STAR test, is that you're going to be given an activity series. And I actually have the STAR test activity series here on the left-hand side of the page. So um, I've, I've copy-pasted it onto here so that we can actually see how you're going to use this in a test setting. So you have your activity series, and you'll notice that it is in, in increasing activity. So the metals here up at the top are more active or more reactive than the metals here down on the bottom. So these metals are less active or um, less reactive than your metals up here super reactive. So we're going to take a look at how we can actually use this in a, a testing environment. So if I ask you on an exam or you ever get asked, okay, is this reaction going to occur? Here you have lithium and aluminum sulfate. Okay, so your aluminum sulfate and your lithium. Is this lithium going to come in and replace this aluminum? And that's a very good question and the answer is actually quite simple. What you need to do is come over here and you're going to look for lithium in your activity series. I'm gonna highlight it here for you. You have lithium, and it's really up at the top. It's one of their most active or reactive metals. Then you have aluminum down here, and the answer is, if this metal that is by itself is more active than the metal that it would be replacing, then this reaction will happen. So if we were to just say, okay, yes, this reaction would happen. So lithium would come in and replace aluminum, making lithium sulfate and aluminum, okay? Now, um, let's take a quick look at, let me erase this right here. We're going to take a quick look at our next one and see if this one would happen. We take a look at magnesium and hydrogen, okay? And hydrogen is not a metal, but we do put it in the activity series because it is an ion, a positive ion that can be replaced. That's why it's over on the left-hand side of the periodic table, even though it's a non-metal. So we take a look at our magnesium. Let's find that over here. Magnesium's right there. We're going to highlight it. So we have our magnesium and our hydrogen down here. So based on that, we know that the magnesium is the more active of the two sub of the two metals, and it will come in and replace this hydrogen. Okay which will produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So this reaction will happen, okay? The, ga the element that is on its own, that it's by itself, this magnesium, is more reactive and therefore will replace the hydrogen, okay? So let's erase these again. 
and try the next one. Here we have iron and copper nitrate. So we wanna see if iron will come in and replace this copper in copper nitrate to um, produce iron nitrate. Now, what we look at, we wanna find our iron over here. We have iron down here. And then we have copper, which is down here, right? So based on that, what do you think is going to happen? Is this reaction going to take place or not? Okay. So we take a look and we say, okay, well, iron is more reactive and therefore will come in and replace this copper and knock that copper out. And that copper will be left by itself. Come over here and be by itself. So we'll end up with iron nitrate and copper by itself. This reaction will happen, okay? All right, let's take a look at this next one. Okay, if we take a look at this um, chlorine here, we have chlorine gas, uh, diatomic chlorine gas, plus uh, sodium iodide. Now, what's interesting here is that chlorine is a non-metal and so it will be replacing a non-metal. So it will, the sodium as the metal is the one uh, metal, uh, one positive ion. So you have chlorine and you're asking whether or not it will take the place of iodine. So if you come over here and take a look in your um, metal activity series, you look for chlorine and you realize, oh my goodness, chlorine's not there. And the reason that chlorine isn't there is because chlorine's not a metal. So it's not gonna be in a list of metal activity series. So um, what we do in this case, we're dealing with a halogen, chlorine's a halogen, iodine is also a halogen. We look at our halogen gases on the periodic table and this is where knowing your periodic table trends comes into play and you need to know that your increasing activity is the higher up the, the non-metal is on the periodic table. So you will find that chlorine gas is at the top of the periodic table on the halogen gases. And then you have your iodine, which comes underneath it. So iodine is less reactive and chlorine is more reactive. So this chlorine will come in and replace this iodine. So, so this reaction will actually happen. So you will see sodium chloride and iodine, diatomic iodine gas um, uh, as the reactants or the products here. So on this last one, let's take a look at you here. You have bromine and you have fluorine. Now, the interesting thing here is it, this is very similar. Again, bromine and fluorine, not metals. They are halogens and as halogens, we're gonna look at where bromine is on the periodic table and where fluorine is on the periodic table because this bromine would be trying to come in and replace this fluorine gas. And so we need to take a look and where they are on the periodic table. Well, bromine actually comes underneath fluorine, making fluorine the more reactive. And so this actually isn't going to happen. So for the first time in this podcast, you're gonna see what happens when you have a no reaction. And you're gonna put an NR on that, meaning that this reaction will not occur. So rather than actually writing out the products and balancing these equations, you're simply going to write NR on the bottom. Now I am going to show you these balanced equations so that you can see the ones that actually did occur and how they would be written out. We are gonna be going over again some more um, details on the predicting the products and how you figure out what the products of those reactions are going to be. So let me show you the end result of each of these equations. And um, what I would like for you to do right now is pause it and see if you can predict those products for me for those reactions that will occur. This should become your first step before you balance or before you write formulas or before you complete these reactions, you need to see if these reactions will happen. So um, making sure that we we did that, we would notice that this bromine and um, sodium fluoride reaction would not happen. 
And so we wouldn't balance this, we wouldn't complete it, we wouldn't try to make products or anything um, because it's a no reaction. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to ask you to pause the video, write these down, see if you can predict the outcome or the reactants or the products of these reactants and see if you get this single replacement because I know that some of you guys are still struggling at this point. So um, I'm going to pause it for a second and we will come right back and I will show you the end result of each of these. So if we take a look here, we actually see that I've solved each of these equations that could be solved and they are not balanced, but they are they are complete. Now one of the problems that I've seen with uh, many of you is that you're trying to balance the equation as you're writing them and a lot of times that will lead to confusion because you think okay there's two ALs over here so there must be two ALs over here and that's balancing that's not writing the equation so you need to write your products first. So what I did here is I wrote my products first and so you can see here that I have um, aluminum and then I have lithium and sulfate. And the reason that I have two lithium and one sulfate, that's SO4, so is because lithium has a charge of plus one and sulfate has a charge of minus two. So it's gonna take two lithium to match up with that one sulfate. And for example, here I have H2 because hydrogen is one of those diatomic molecules that is always going to be in a pair. So if it's by itself, it's gonna be H2. Then magnesium chloride, I am not, in this, I repeat this, I am not looking over here to see what I had. What I'm looking at is what I need to put magnesium and chlorine together. Magnesium has that plus two charge and chlorine has a negative one charge, which means that I'm gonna need two chlorine to make this formula work, okay? Over here you have your iron and your copper nitrate. You actually did have this reaction occur. Again, we checked over here with the, uh, the activity series of our metals. And so you have copper and then you have iron and nitrate with two. And we just call this iron two, there should be a two up here. Um, we just use the same number of nitrates as we had here. But under normal circumstances, that iron would be marked with a charge, okay? Here for your chlorine, you have a diatomic chlorine coming in to replace the iodine in the sodium as we discussed. And this will be I2. Again, iodine is one of your diatomics, so you're not gonna leave it by itself. And then your sodium chloride is over here, right? So this is unbalanced, complete formulas. Then you would go back and you would do your count, compare, change, and check for each one of these formulas in order to balance them. And I think most of you guys have finally gotten um, that down. So I will show you um, the completed balanced versions of these equations in just a moment. I want you to pause and see if you can fix those balancings on your own. Okay, now keep in mind um, here, I, the last thing that I'm adding here is that I've balanced each of these equations and of course I've cut out all of the trial and error and notes and all of the extra stuff. And I'm just showing you the final answers, those final numbers for the balancing equations. So if you've done the count, the compare, the change, and the check, you'll see that the red numbers, and I do apologize, I'm, I'm kind of getting used to being able to draw on our animation program. So I know that it, this all looks like it was done by a two-year-old, so please forgive the, the, the handwriting. We have, um, here six two and three we have two here this equation was already balanced and this one has a two in front of the sodium iodide and a two in front of the NaCl and of course this one doesn't need to be balanced because it's a no reaction so um, there's your final answer and I will see you in class tomorrow